part two of Croton Plant Abstract. Croton Plant Abstract, by the way, is the title of the artwork that I'm donating to this year's Cascade AIDS Project Art Auction. Anyway, in this, in this video, I'll talk a little bit more about the artwork itself, but mostly it's going to be about framing the piece. Picture framing is a big part of my life. I've been framing for a lot of years. I thought it'd be nice to show you guys how I do my picture framing. Because I already know what I want, I didn't need to look at frame and mat samples, so that step isn't shown here. Accurate measurements followed by precise cutting is of course very important, and there is a little bit of math involved. There are inch increments drawn on the fence and table to assist my cutting. They aren't perfect, so I always cut a bit long on the first leg, then back it down to reach the right size after measuring. Some may wonder why I have two sliding miter saws next to each other. For framing larger pieces, I need to have at least 10 feet on either side of the saw blade. My shop wall wasn't long enough, so I came up with this solution. I can cut the first miter with the right saw, which gives me enough room to the left of it. Then if needed, I can cut the second miter with the left saw so I have enough room to the right of it. This is a thumbnail router. For strength, it creates an H-shaped joint when the frame pieces are glued together. I'll show you the thumbnail inserts a bit later. These are picture framing vices. I use bits of mat board to protect the frame's finish. Each gluing takes about a half hour to dry enough for me to put in those thumbnail inserts.
Foam core is the standard backing. My mat cutter has two blades, one perpendicular for cutting the foam core and the overall size of the mat. The other is mounted at an angle for cutting the mat window. I almost always use acid-free mats to protect the items I frame. I'm penciling in the window on the back side of the mat. By using the mat cutter fence to do this, I know it will come out perfect. For my own photography, I will sign and write the title on the back side of the print. I like using corner mounts to keep the artwork in place because they are archival and easy to use. Those bean bags are just clean weights to keep the artwork from moving while I mount the art. ATG is the industry standard double sided tape. You don't need much to keep the mat in position. I'll use more of it to put on the frame's dust cover later. Cutting glass does take some practice. Again, I almost always use the more archival UV filtered glass to prevent the artwork's colors from fading.
I like keeping large enough scraps for future smaller jobs. My workbenches are tall enough to store full-size sheets. An old handkerchief works well for cleaning the glass. I can wash it and use it over and over, unlike paper towels. Framers points are an easy way to secure the glass mat and backing inside the frame. It never hurts to check again for dust particles under the glass. An old mat cutter blade is too dull for mat cutting, but works just fine for trimming the dust cover. It never hurts to check again which side is up before putting on the wire. I usually put the wire about a third of the way down. That yellow plastic thing is a manual hand crank drill. I use it for pilot holes. The wire gets fed through the hangers twice before wrapping, so it won't unravel later. Felt bump-ons cushion the frame where it will touch the wall. For provenance, I write my name and the piece's title and date on the back of a business card and mount it with another of my business cards in a corner. That other sticker just indicates that I used conservation clear glass. So this is where I've been hanging the pieces that I'm going to be donating to the Cascade Age Project Art Auction until I donate them. It's nice to uh, enjoy them and, and live with them myself for a little bit. Since we've got it up here and you can see it, this is a good enough time to go ahead and talk a little bit about the artwork. The croton plant, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, is this uh, beautiful variegated leaf plant 
tropical. Wendy and I saw this in Florida when we were on a trip a few years back. I use Photoshop quite a bit, as you can see. It's really abstract. I've combined not only the croton plant, but a little bit of a swamp lily as well. Separate pictures kind of scrambled up together. I like the, the texture and the color. Uh, a little bit of mystery as to what it is. You have to kind of look to really see new things in it. It's, uh, it's a fun project. It's part of a series, a long-running series that I call Magical Absurdities. Hopefully some collectors that come to the art auction will appreciate it as much as I do and will purchase it and help support the Cascade Age Project art auction and their, their very worthy uh, mission. One of the things I really like about this piece is the, is the variegated leaves in the in the plant. They're kind of like brush strokes, you know, the just the beautiful uh, color and texture of the of the leaves. So I'm using them as brush strokes by abstracting it. It becomes less just a plant that you're looking at and more I don't know the vibrancy of life in general is kind of how I like to think about it.